And let's continue looking at some floodplain species here. It's now uh, second week of October and most of the plants that make it difficult to venture off the trail on floodplains have kind of died back and I can make my way through this area without getting stung by stinging nettles. And we got some cooler weather so I can wear long pants without overheating. So here we are on the floodplain of the Little Miami River at the Fort Ancient State Memorial. And I got my eyes on a uh, grove of silver maples. There's a couple dozen of them growing right here. And this is almost like a slough. I think that's a word they use down south along the Mississippi River and the bigger rivers down there where water kind of creates its own channel from the main river. Well, this is almost like a slough here. It's actually still quite wet despite weeks of drought. And no plants growing on this slough. This is probably underwater a lot of the time, and most of these plants just never got a chance to set seed in here. And it is devoid of vegetation. So kind of a lower area along this floodplain. And we got a lot of these silver maples here. And they can get quite large. Three or four feet in diameter is not uncommon. They grow very quickly. So even a tree like this one that's two feet in diameter may not be that old. It can be a landscape tree and people plant them in their yards and they get pretty big pretty fast. But they also break easy. So here's our two foot diameter silver maple reaching up towards the sky. And the leaves are well out of sight. <laughs> and I did a segment on the leaves of the silver maple on, an, on a tree that was uh, drooping down towards the Mad River where you could see the leaves easily. In this case, we're looking strictly at the bark. Has a lot of vertical lines. And so does the red maple, but this has more of them and they're probably a little closer together. And it can get a little shaggy sometimes, like the shag bark hickory. But as a rule, it's not as shaggy as any of the hickory trees, either the shell bark or the shag bark. But there are some plates on this larger tree breaking free and shagging up a little. So Mother Nature kind of refuses to be boxed in. Some of these trees have overlapping features. Occasionally you find a tree that has features that aren't described in the guidebook. But the hue of this bark is almost an orangish gray, a little more orange than brown, and a little more orangish than the uh, tan color of the sugar maple or the gray color of the red maple. So pretty easy to distinguish by habitat and by the color and shape of these barks. The uh, lines are quite, quite long and go all the way up the tree. And I'm not finding red maple or sugar maple down here to confuse it with. Normally their habitats would not overlap by very much, if at all.